uh, my computer still hasn't been shut off in three or four days now. Um, I don't have any problems with it. Like I can use the sleep st um, standby uh, setting as well, so it doesn't have to use too much power. The only thing is, if I shut off my computer, then it has problems turning back on again. Like I said in the previous video or in deck build, I don't remember exactly when I said it, but yeah, in the previous deck build I said that. But yeah, so um, as long as I can keep this computer on and it's not going to break down into um, uselessness into a bunch of crap then I guess we're good um, anyways before my computer started having problems I um, went out and I ordered a new microphone because I didn't like my old microphone so that's uh, arrived yesterday and I'm now using it and it's a blue snowball microphone so yeah this uh, is supposed to be a really good microphone that a lot of uh, famous youtubers use as well and um, from the preliminary tests I've run, uh, it seems to be pretty good as well. So, um, I don't know, I'm probably going to have a, a little bit of a different voice for you guys. Which may be a little bit disconcerting at first, I guess. But you'll get used to it, right? And this is more natural. This is more uh, the way I sound in real life. Um, so yeah, anyways. Let's get into this. Uh, I got a new deck build video for you today. Ah, oh, starts on it, of course. I forgot. Well, I guess now now I ruined the surprise, but you could have read the title, and you did. So it doesn't matter. Uh, let's see if... Ooh, close. Well, there we go. Exalted Darkness. Um, yeah, so again, all of it that's gonna be in the deck is in the deck right now. And um, I know the mana curve is a little bit weird. It does have reasons why it's a little bit weird like this. So I guess I'll get it, get to that when I get to the one drops and the four drops, which is kind of the weird spots in in the mana curve. Cause, cause if you don't know, a, a good mana curve normally should have a, a nice bell effect. So it should be like uh, the top of maybe a bubble or a round. Anyways, it's supposed to be round, um, but this one is a little bit weird. Of course, in this game you don't have the, as much choice as you have in the normal game. Uh, in, in normal Magic Gathering and you don't get to always, you know, pick your cards r r regarding the mana cost. Sometimes you just have to get the better card. And that's really what happens in this deck. And aside from that, the other issue is that um, for some reason it really likes to give you uh, too many swamps in the deck as well. I managed to get it so that I have 11 swamps and, one, and 9 planes, but that did require some effort here. So um, that's what happened. Uh, anyways, let's get into this then. I feel that these Cathedral of Wards are, uh, are definitely worth in the deck. And uh, this way I have 24 lands, so I run only 2 Evolving Wilds rather than all 4. Um, this is not a very high maintenance deck. It doesn't. I do have a bit, uh, a bit much 5 drops I guess, but I don't have any 6 drops or higher. So I don't need more than 24 mana. Uh, and in fact 23 mana might be enough, but I did get run into some problems where it seemed that I was getting mana screwed more than I was getting mana flooded. And as you know, mana screw is when you don't have enough mana. And mana flood is when you get too much mana. So I ran into more situations where I didn't have enough mana. So that's why I'm running 24 lands at the moment. Anyways, I felt that these Cathedral of Wars are worth running in the deck. I've had enough games in the, in the testing with these, like... For every card where I'm unsure of in a deck, I specifically test that card and every time I write down whether or not it's been useful. And I had more games where the Cathedral of War was useful than where it was useless, as in I really needed to drop an Evolving Wild and, and get my Swamp or my Plains or whatever. This just helps this deck out a lot because this deck really likes to race. It doesn't like to, This deck doesn't like to block the opponents and um, because it's, it's a deck like that, a way you really don't want to block too much. You're just racing the opponent for damage most of the time. So that one damage over time really can add up to uh, give you a lead. And can help you win the game that way. And that's why I run the Cathedral of Wars. Uh, Sigil of Distinction is the same reason. Also because it really helps in, in the situation that I just described. Even if they get rid of your creature you can just attach it to something else. Yeah it does get minus counters. You just drop this like late game 
uh, probably turn four because I don't have many four drops. So this is more. This is probably going to be four drop most of the time. And you can give something three uh, plus one, plus three plus three counter. And if that doesn't work, then you give another creature plus two plus two counter if they get rid of your creature or whatever. And it's usually enough with a deck like this. I personally think it's worth running this, and it gives more counters than any other exalted guy would have given. So that's something to consider, right? Anyways. Then there's the Akrazen Squires, which uh, I wanted to run as many wonder ups as possible. What I really wanted to do was get two Akrazen Squires and two Judy and four Judy Bound Deads in the deck. And that's the way I ran it for a while. But what happened was that I had 12 uh, Swamps and, and 8 Plains in the deck because of that. And uh, e eventually I cut down a little bit on the Judy Bound Dead. But uh, I don't really need to talk about these guys too much. They're one drops with Exalted, so you gotta you gotta run as many of these as you can. But unfortunately, I can't run two more, which I really wanted to do. Tormented Soul. Oh wait, this card I guess I should talk about. Well, it it sucks. <laughs> it's terrible. This is not the kind of effect you need in this deck. So yeah, um, Tormented Soul is also a one drop, but it doesn't have Exalted. What it does have, however, is Evasion. And you might think, well, you know, as I did when I first saw this deck, I was like, well, you know, I I'm gonna need a lot of evasion, because if they can just jump block my big, huge, exalted dude all the time, then I'm not getting anywhere. So I need as many evasion guys as needed, and it turns out you don't really need it. I mean, jump blocking is just jump blocking, right? It's not, it's not the end of the world when they jump block you. What you're really worried about is removal or something like that. So these duty bound deads are better because they do have regenerate. Which does take it out of combat, but yeah. Anyways, so you're basically just... I don't think they're worth um, the fact that they don't have Exalted. I think um, any creature having Exalted is more important than being unblockable uh, in this deck. Now, even Squire, I'm running three of them. And I, wa I was running two of them at first, but again, this is the mana curve. Uh, I run three of them because this is the way I could get it to be 11 swamps and 9 uh, nine planes. Because I really did want to have an extra plane in there. I really think it's pretty important. And most of the deck builds I see of other people, they have 12 swamps and 8 planes. I went to the a little bit extra distance to get it to work the way it is right now. And I, it, I don't, didn't have to sacrifice too much for it. So that's the that's the way I do it in the run now. So as you, as you hear, one of those... Um, Judy Bound Dead turned into an Avon Squire to make that possible. That's why I'm running three of them, otherwise I would run two of them because you don't need too many more uh, two drops. As you can see I'm already running 15 of them. Um, because this Darklit Gargoyle is amazing, one of the best cards in your deck. Yeah, it doesn't have Exalted, but this guy can do so much damage that you just have to run him. If you can attack with this guy and get in for some damage then pretty much win because this guy can deal so much damage and um, just having this guy out there also means that you, instead of, yeah, you're not, you're using your swamps to give this guy plus, right, instead of dropping guys. And sometimes, sure, that's a problem against, like, decks that have bounce or something like that. On, in other occasions, however, other decks, it forces them to deal with what you have on the board before you drop more guys. And sometimes that's good if they have mass removal, for instance. So it's not, it's not like it's bad or anything. You're using a mana up. On this guy is kind of what I'm trying to say. Obviously, you want demonic tutor because it's a two cost. Yeah, I don't need to explain that. That's just great. Um, I'm only running two Doom Blades. Another card I uh, I got rid of one of them um, mainly because well the Doom Blades are really good, but drawing more than one of them, especially against the black deck, is is pretty annoying. There's only one mono black deck in the game though, so it's not like it's a total. It, it, it's not like it's bad, uh, terrible to have Doom Blades. Um, one mono black deck in the game, and, and in the expansion, there's going to be a lot of dual color decks. Sure, some of them are going to have black in there, but they're also going to be have other colors. So you can always use your Doom Blade on something. But just for that one mono black deck in the game, I did get rid of one Doom Blade. But not just because of that, also because this is one of the cards I also got rid of to get my planes and swamp situation to be better. And uh, I found that the. Um, pacifisms aren't that much worse than the Doom Blades, simply because the rest of the removal in this deck is so good that having one pacifism, you can usually get away with it. You just use your pacifism on whatever you can 
user done that doesn't have like activated abilities or whatever. Even if it's not that great or important, then you, you just use your pacifism and that and your, the rest of your removal will take care of the more annoying stuff. Um, and obviously that's the same strategy you're gonna use with Pillory of the Sleepers. Pillory of the Sleepless, jeez. Sleepers. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and then there's a lot of Knight of Glories and these guys. These have protection from white and protection from black and that's just so relevant in this game that um, you can't not run these and they're by the way they're also two ones so these are usually in the early game are gonna be your most powerful guys to attack with uh, unless you're keeping mana to use on the dark lit cargo and sometimes even early on you're not you, you have the dark lit cargo on the field but you want to drop some more guys and then start whacking a lot with the dark lit cargo then if you also have a two one then this guy is gonna be your uh, front warrior so just the fact that there are two ones instead of one ones like many of the other uh guys and the fact that they have protection which usually which like if you get a knight of glory against obedient dead he probably won and the same goes goes for knight of infamy against peacekeepers so those are some of the pow most powerful cards in the, in the game so you definitely uh, most powerful decks in the game so um being able to just get around them and, and just steal a win from them basically but just by drawing one of these guys is pretty good uh, and that's why I'm running them so yeah two doom blades and two pacifisms anyways I'm not running the child of knights uh, because I found just in testing that even though you're racing the opponent you usually you really don't need lifelink um, because the opponent isn't necessarily racing you back um, and what I'm trying to say is that, especially against control decks, which there are a lot of, and ex decks that are less aggro than this deck, which is 8 of the 10 decks, this one is just as aggro <laughs> as itself, obviously, and then Goblins is more ag aggressive than this deck, but other than that, every deck is less aggressive than the Exalted deck, so you're a pretty aggressive deck, so that means that you're gonna be the one dealing the damage, which means you don't necessarily need lifelink, because you don't necessarily need to have life to survive your opponent's onslaught, as long as you can kill him first. So it's not the most relevant thing in this deck to have. And obviously, lifelink is, is good against like burn, but they're gonna kill this guy, he's one toughness, so um, you don't get the lifelink against burn, so it's, yeah. Another thing against burn that's good is Mark of the Asylum. Now, I see a lot of people running this card just because you have the Tudor card and because Born of Flame is is the worst matchup against this deck. I don't know if Born of Flame is necessarily the worst matchup. Um, maybe I've just been really lucky when I've been playing Born of Flame and I'll admit I haven't played too many games with this deck. So um, I'm glad to like uh, accept the fact that people who have run more games with this deck are saying that Born of Flame is, is the worst matchup, then I'm glad to accept the fact that Born of Flame is indeed the worst matchup, but for the games I've had against it, I didn't really need the Mark of Asylum. And, as you guys should know of me um, by now, is that I don't like to run cards that are not always useful. And Mark of Asylum is like the the thing that, you know, solidifies that, that aspect of not always being useful. So let's say that Every deck is being played just as much as every other deck. And I know that's not true because for one thing Dream Pops is used a lot more than other decks. But let's say that for a second, right? So there's two decks which is works well on, well let's say three, three decks. Pack Instinct, Born of Flame and Goblin Gangland. So three times out of ten when you play this deck it's gonna be useful. And seven times out of ten it's not gonna be useful. And I find that, you know, out of 10 games, um, there's going to be a lot of times where uh, one card is going to make the difference. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and those times are, are more than 3 times out of 10. Um, I would say that, like, maybe 7 times out of 10, one card makes the difference in the game. And the other games are just won by luck or whatever. Uh, or just, you know, having a much better hand or the opponent being mana flooded or mana screwed or whatever. So let's say seven, not, well, maybe six. Six games are decided by one card. And three games is where this card is useful. So the math doesn't add up to me wanting to put this card in the deck. See where I'm going from it? 
And yeah, I get the I get the idea that demonic tutor is there, so you can tutor for this thing when you're playing against Born of Flame. But then again, they're both two drops. So yeah, um, there's both just one of them in the deck at that point if you do that. So it's not like if there were two demonic tutors, then I might think about it, because then there'd be more demonic tutors than there are Mark of Asylums, and then it makes kind of sense, I guess. But uh, that's just not the case, so I don't think I'm doing that. And then uh, we get to Mighty Leap, which is another one of those cards that just doesn't make sense in this deck. Most of my cards already have flying, by the way, and I certainly don't need an instant speed plus two plus two because I can give um, I can give plus one plus what per turn just by dropping a, a dude for two mana or maybe even less. And that that works for the rest of the turns, and you know. That just makes more sense to me to have than this thing. Because um, let's say I drop the 2 drop on turn like 2 or something. Then I have 3, 4 turns to go before I kill the opponent with a pretty good hand. Um, then it's better to drop that dude than have this sitting hand. And, and at the end of the time, uh, plus 2, plus 2. Because if you drop the dude, if you had a dude there to drop, then it would have been plus 8, plus 8 over time. So yeah, I don't need Mighty Leap for that reason. And Ring of Zephyr again... Uh, it does give a regenerate, which is actually also good against burn. <laughs> um, yeah, it figures, right? Regenerate is good against burn, who'd have known? They only have two cards that deal with regenerate, um, and it's basically the same card twice, uh, which is the free cost, free damage to everything on the field, except flying creatures. Uh, flame break, right. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's the the only card really, like, I would probably side this in against Burn, but that's it. I wouldn't side it in against Goblins, because against Goblins especially I need as many dudes as I can, so uh, that doesn't make sense to do. Um, but yeah, other than that, the Regenerate isn't, yeah, it, I guess it's useful against Born, uh, against uh, um, Obedient Dead, but then the one guy you want to wanna be able to Regenerate is going to be a big guy and you're not probably not going to be able to equip this before kills it anyway. Anyways, that's all I wanted to say about uh, that ring. Spirit Mantle is not needed because the thing that this deck has most trouble against is removal spells and not creatures. Um, because your guys are going to deal much more damage than their guys are going to be dealing. If you use the Exalted mechanic. So, and the most they can do is probably chump block, so you don't really need protection from creatures. Unless the match is going really badly. Uh, I do like about it that it does give plus one plus one, so it's kind of um, just like a creature with Exalted. But you can get two for one when you have this. And uh, it just makes your weakness against removal that much worse, because now they remove two cards instead of one. Dagger Claw him. I don't get it, what's the guy doing in this deck? Let's just move on. Guardians of Akraza. Um, you might want to run one of these. I don't personally. I don't. I don't like it. It's it's a pretty solid blocker though. If you get them out soon enough, early enough. But that's turn three. Turn three might already be a little bit a little bit late for something that just has four toughness and no no offensive powers. There are cards that can can kill this at that time. Especially if you weren't on play, if you were on draw, uh, which means that you went second in the match. For those of our newer, newest viewers, I guess, <laughs> who don't yet know everything about Magic Gathering. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, so yeah, Gu Guardians of Akraza is um, not always useful on turn 3, but I get why you want to run this, because it's a guy with Exalted that can actually block. Uh, well, which most of you, well, all of you guys can't really can't. So this kind of makes it more of a control matchup, and you do have the the cards for it, for this deck to be well, uh, to be good in control. But personally, I don't think the card is really worth it as a wall. Um, and if you drop this any time later than turn three, he's too late really to be of much use. Um, he the most he can do at that point is probably gonna be chump block. So. Uh, that's that's why I don't like him. And again, Servant of Neferox. Well, this guy at least is Exalted, but it doesn't have any type of evasion. Yeah, it's a free one, but come on now. 
that's great if you're if you're gold fishing, which is to say, the opponent is doing sh jack squat, but the opponent is gonna do stuff. The opponent is gonna try and stop you, so free one isn't gonna get by as easy, uh, and a turn free free one isn't gonna get by uh, the opponent as easy as you as for instance a one one flyer might. So and that is a two cost guy, and this is a three cost guy. So yeah, I don't like him. Uh, Sword of Vengeance isn't a guy. Uh, I don't personally think that this deck really needs all of this. It does give Trample, which is nice. Vigilance isn't needed because you don't want to block anyways. Haste is not really needed. Um, first Strike isn't important because most of you guys are going to be bigger. So yeah, the only thing really here is the Trample and the plus 2 plus 0. And I don't think I want to spend 6 mana to get that. So no thanks. Um... To get that on a creature and then have the creature being removed, costing me time and everything. No, I don't want that to happen. Uh, Mortify, obviously a great card, can destroy a creature or enchantment. Uh, great card, uh, I mean it's a free cost removal spell, destroy any creature. So it's basically already just as good as a murder is. And then it's better because it can also destroy an enchantment. Uh, I think I used five different ways to say the same thing now, so let's move on to the next card. Pillory of the Sleepless. You just throw this guy on the first thing you can throw it on, and it's gonna give put them on more, even more of a clock and and prevent them from blocking your guy for a turn. So why not, right? That that seems like a really good way. And then there's Royal Assassin, which if they try to race you back and try to kill you, this just this just makes it even more impossible for them, because you can destroy any tap creature. If they've got tappers that try to tap your guys, then you can kill their tappers. In response, stuff like that, really good, really useful. Obviously, it comes well with Angelic Benediction, but then that's the only time Angelic Benediction is really gonna do you much good. Um, they're not gonna have just one creature to block you, and most of the time, the creatures aren't gonna. There's, there's not gonna be one creature that is more important in blocking your guy than the other guys, I guess. Uh, I mean, they could have one flyer or something, but. Oh well, so they jump block it once. I mean, I don't think I wanna wanna waste the four four cost spell, be an enchantment that stops it, that taps one dude when I attack. It doesn't even doesn't even get rid of their dude. And dusk mental mental prowler is just way too late. It does have haste, but it comes in way too late. Four cost guy. I don't need I don't need dudes. I don't need well I don't really need attackers at that point. I just need dudes. That really um, sealed the deal for me because I already have guys out at that point. So stuff like more removal is great at that point. Anyways, no mercy again. Um, I personally don't like this because turn four might be too late for no mercy to have an impact on the board. I recognize um, that it's a really powerful card, however. But I have worship, which I prefer, and. Worship is also a white cost spell, which helps me get my mana right. But although that that's not why I did the choice, by the way, because I I chose not to use No Mercy before I uh, went uh, went and did that. But um, that's not a reason not to run No Mercy, I guess. But um, anyways, the reason I chose not to run this is because, well, again, I was testing it and it didn't perform as well as I wanted it to for a four cost enchantment. So. No thanks, and also uh, Silent Arbiter I didn't think was really needed, um, didn't have enough of an impact on the board. Uh, it does help when you're trying to block, but then you're not always trying to block. I get why you want this in the deck, just to be like an insurance against goblins or, or any kind of shenanigans like that. And it might be better in the expansion because I think there's going to be a token deck uh, coming out there, another one uh, that tries to make a lot of dudes. Anyways. Um, so I get why, I mean, Silent Arbiter would be good there, but um, I don't think that's, it's not good in every matchup, and that's why I don't run it, I guess. Um, I didn't even, there's more free costs here, and I'm already on four costs, so what am I doing? If indicate, destroy target permanent, you gotta run that shit. Whisper Show Cloak, now here's my unblockable, but the reason I run this is not before the unblockable, which is a nice bonus, but mostly because it gives my creature shroud, and like I said, this deck is weak against removal, so that's why I'm running Whisper Show Cloaks. And especially, what it prevents you from is attacking with your dude and then them killing your guy in mid-combat. 
and then you wasting your turn because you're trying to get the exalted mechanic to work so this prevents it like if you equip this they have to kill it in response to you equipping it and then at least you can still attack with another creature and not waste your complete your total turn that's why this is a really good card for this deck um, a sublime archangel might just be the best card in the deck i guess although no that that honor probably goes to royal assassin I don't know, there are a lot of really good card in, cards in this deck, so I'm not going to say more than that. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of good, really good cards, but this thing uh, probably wins you the game when it comes out. It's just so powerful, and if you don't know what this... You're like, wait, all my creatures already have Exalted, why do I need other creatures you control have Exalted? Well, because Exalted stacks. If, you has, if a creature you own has Exalted twice, then it triggers Exalted twice. So, yeah... That thing has a big impact on the board and, and allows you to swing for 10 out of nowhere, for instance. So, Worship, this thing is the card I prefer. Um, like th This thing just makes it so the opponents can't, can't race you. They have to actually deal with your creatures. And you're gonna have a lot of creatures in this deck. At least 50% uh, like of my deck's creatures. That's not too bad. Um, I guess I, it could be better. But uh, for a white black deck, I think that's a lot of creatures actually. And you're at least gonna have one creature that, if you're not playing too badly, is gonna be able to stay alive. Unless, of course, they use mass removal. But if they use mass removal, then all of their guys die as well. And which is a reason to drop this as late as possible, I guess. Hmm? If you're trying to outsmart the opponent, because then at least if they use mass removal, they gotta kill more of their creatures. Because they already committed to the board, thinking that they could kill you when they're by racing you. Um, but yeah, anyways, Worship is just a really good card. And you gotta pretty much run it. And, um... It's also a good card against Burn. They don't always have the kind of hand that they can deal with creatures instead of burning your face off. So this only gives them one of those two options. And if you have a creature they can regenerate, uh, Judy Bound Dead. Unfortunately, I won't run two of them, but still. Um, then and you have worship out on the field and you have the mana to regen your creature then you pretty much well not pretty much then you just win against burn <laughs> unless they draw flame break which would really suck if that happened but yeah because flame break can kill regen uh, i already said that i think anyways battle grace angel out of these five drops i felt that battle grace angel has the least impact on the board so i don't run battle grace angel but i am running the deathbringer leeches and the Divinity of Pride. Divinity of Pride is um, probably a little bit better than Deathbringer Leech. This thing has more of an immediate impact on the board. And if they can't remove it, then you just swing and, and you... Like, it's a swing for 8. Because you gain 4 while they lose 4. So that's really powerful. And with Exalted, it's easy enough to make this guy swing for more than 4. And it's easy enough to get to 25 life if they haven't dealt with your life yet. If they're playing a control deck, then this is even worse. Because you're probably still at 20 life when you drop this. And it's easy if they can't get rid of it or, or deal with it for one, even one turn. Then you're probably already going to be at 25 life. And then it's going to be even harder to get rid of this guy the next turn. So he's really good. And he's really powerful. Um, the reason, like... Divinity of Pride, if you look at this mana symbols, he, he only uses hybrid mana and um, that also counts for unmake. So what that means is that if you have a Cathedral of War, then he's not a 5 drop, he's a 6 drop. But even as a 6 drop, I think he's worth it and he's at least better than, for instance, Nefar Rocks, which I'll get to later because I'm still going to talk about Deathbringer Leash first. But anyways, yeah, that's something to keep in mind though. Um, and that's a reason why you might not want to run those. As in those lands, uh, the Cathedral of Wars. But personally, I feel that they have enough of an impact to run them. Uh, anyways, Deathbringer Leash gives all your guys plus one plus one. And if you guys happen to be, be white and black, such as Divinity of Pride, they get plus two plus two. And that's why it says what it says. Why, that's why it doesn't say other white or black creatures you control get plus one plus one, but. It actually says in the two different sentences. That's because white and black creatures, uh, no, as in a creature that is both black and white, will get plus two plus two. Um, because this syntaxing, I guess. 
But anyways, and his ability is just really, really powerful. And he's a free for himself, so if this guy gets to stay on the board for a turn, then you probably, like, unless you draw absolutely nothing, but even then he's a free for, so at least he's going to be powerful enough, probably, to attack with the exalted boost from your other guys. So yeah, this guy is just really good, and you don't really need anything past the 5 mana point, because Deathbringer Legion and Divinity of Pride is so good, and because Worship and Sublime Archangel is so good, and because all of this removal ensures that your early guys are going to have an easier time getting through. Which means you don't need big guys to, uh, to uh, basically have a plan B or something I guess, I don't know. But the Firox also, the problem with him is that he has to attack himself. Which means for instance that you, ca that you can't attack with uh, Darklit Gargoyle instead, which is going to deal more damage than the Firox. Yeah, that's crazy isn't it? A 2 drop, which is more powerful than a 5 drop. Then a 6 drop. So his ability only works when you attack with the Firox and then the uh, defending player gets to choose the creature. So basically it's like they're chump blocking your guy. Maybe they have to chump block twice, sure, if they're low on, on health, but still. I don't think that's powerful enough. Uh, and I don't, well, I think it is a powerful ability, but I don't like that it's just if you attack with the Firox. Because that means he doesn't do anything the turn he drops into play. And if you compare that with, for instance, the Titans. They do something when they drop into play. And that's why those, those are good as 6 drops. And that's why a creature like, like Nefarox is not that great as a 6 drop. As a 6 drop you really need to just do something the turn you come into play. And just having Exalted, which is the only thing it really contributes, is not good enough. I don't think. So yeah... Um, and he's a 6 drop <laughs> and you don't need 6 drops anyways in this deck an angel of despair is a 7 drop that kills a permanent uh, you don't need a 7 drop death or snell, come on now come on now this is just silly <laughs> um, ok so maybe you would run this against Actually, I'm trying to think of something you might run this again. Yeah, Obedient Dead. Obedient Dead. That's the matchup where Dead as Nell kind of makes sense. Because it's if things go bad, then it's probably going to take you a long time. And, it's, and the game is probably going to go long anyway, because that's what Obedient Dead is trying to do. And then you kind of punish him for it, and it's an enchantment which Obedient Dead can't get rid of. So I guess that's the only matchup where I would think about maybe having Dead as Nell. But you can't sideboard in this game. So, no, it's not in the deck. Anyways, um, did I talk? Yeah, I, I, I explained why I only have four f uh, one drops. It's because the mana. And let me just show it. If I uh, add one of these and I take out one of the Avon Squires, then I have 12 and 8. And I'd rather have n uh, um, 11 and 9. And I think that um, these guys aren't that great. Wait, what am I? Oh, yeah, <laughs> need to get rid of another one. Oh, hang on. Um, these guys aren't that, they're good, but they're not that great that they're worth screwing up my mana for. So, uh, yeah. That's how I run the, the Exalted deck. Alright. That's, um, uh, the first dual color deck out of the way. Uh, I really wanted to do this deck. Because the uh, expansion is gonna be coming out soon, I would say. So, um, that's why I wanted to get, uh, this one done. So that I, uh, will know, you know about the uh, jewel that I have a little bit experience in building jewel color decks when the expansion comes out at least so this is uh, I, I really want to get all the decks done before the expansion comes out but if I don't then at least I want to have Exalted Darkness done let me put it that way so uh, we're gonna do some gameplay but you guys are gonna see that in the next video yeah so my name is Nemo my name will still be Nemo next time oh so tell me what you think about the microphone and uh, if you like this video go ahead and leave it thumbs up and yeah that's it guys see you next time